Today guys is a new base day. Just gonna get my bits together and then I'm gonna go down the post office and, uh, and pick this bad boy up. And I thought it'd be cool to do like an unboxing thing for you guys, show you the new, the new beast and, and then talk specifically, well, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. Okay, let's go get the new bass. Can you sing the La La song? Say bye bye. I've officially got the biggest set of keys in the world. What is going on here? So this is the new, the new studio, what's going to be the new studio. I don't know if it comes across on here how big the actual place is. You could, you could do a live workshop in here with like 15 to 20 people and it would be totally fine. And downstairs, which I'll show you another day, is, well, it's got a ton of cool stuff in there. And then we're going to be moving all, over all the production gear um, today, which is going to be fun. But uh, yeah, the, the quicker that we can get this done the better. How, how cool is this? Check this out. My wife got me this. She got me it years ago, a couple of years ago. Shed. She said, you need one of these because you are always in the shed. And I'm really excited as well to do these, to get these workshops off the, uh, off the ground, these, uh, these week-long workshops that we're going to be doing. And it's going to, we're going to have, we're going to get this massive sign made up right here. SBL sign. It's going to be epic. We've got a brand new base here. We better get it open. Let me just get a bit. Can... Okay, so that's better. Okay, guys, for those who don't know, and when you get a package like this, where's my keys? So you always get a box like this, and you're looking for a knife, and, and you know you can't open it. Just get a key. So you pop the key in. And just now, I know that might, might be simple. For me, it wasn't. I was the guy always looking for a knife to open boxes. And one day, somebody was like, you can just use a key, it's fine. And hey ho, you can. We've got a base case. Oh! So, for those who are wondering what kind of base this is, it is a Moulon. A Moulon, and it's beautiful. It is really tasty. Definitely nitro. <laughs> Definitely nitro. So, um, and by nitro, I mean a nitro cellulose finish. So, when I first try a base, guys, I always like to try it unplugged. And this is because I'm, I'm feeling the resonance in the body. Wood is a non-consistent material. It's, it grows in the ground, it grows in your garden, it grows in forest. Yeah. And sometimes you just get a piece of wood that doesn't resonate right or doesn't resonate nicely. So, and, and sometimes it's to do with certain frequencies. Like you might have had it in the past where you play a bass and you'll play all of the, the strings and then one of the strings, you'll play it and it'll just, it'll be dead. The, the body won't resonate the same. And I'm convinced that that's to do with the, the, the body wood, the neck, and, and essentially it's, it's just that the resonant frequencies aren't being transferred properly. But this one is doing a great job. A lot of the time I've felt it on E strings. You know, you'll, you'll play the G, the D, the A, and then you'll hit that E string and it'll just, it will, won't resonate as much as the other strings. So I'm always looking out for that when I play a new instrument. And this is, uh, this is killing. Hey guys, so this is a completely different day. Um, what I wanted to do is just, you know, 
live with the bass a little bit. But what I know all of you guys will be wanting to know is what does it sound like compared with this one down here? So I thought we could do this just to wrap up the video, do a sort of bit of a sound comparison with the Nate Mendel against the Mulan because, you know, we're bass nerds and we like that. Well, we've got the, uh, the studio in a little bit of a better state, a little bit. We've got a little bit of production space down here where we do the editing for the audios. And then we have kind of got something together down here, just like a working area, just so we can film, film like the Academy show for Scott's Bass Lessons and, you know, and do the live streams from here that we do for Scott's Bass Lessons and the courses. This is like, ultimately, it's gonna look a lot fancier, but it's just to get us going. Anyway, let's do this comparison. Okay guys, so I've got both bases here. Let me just, so I've got both bases here and I'm going to uh, go talk about them both because I know everybody kind of knows about this. And um, obviously this one's completely new to me. And what I find really interesting is that these two basses sound very different. Like hopefully it'll come across on this video. I don't know, we're doing this pretty ghetto style. I'm just using the camera on top of the, uh, on the camera, the mic on top of the camera. But uh, we'll see how we get along anyway. The, the Nate Mendel here has a, a slimmer neck. Um, obviously they've both got rosewood boards. Uh, the Nate Mendel's got a slimmer neck and it's got a quarter pounder in it. Seymour Duncan quarter pounder, whereas the Moulon is based on a, it's like wound by the guys at Moulon, Moulon it's hand wound and it's uh, based on a pre-CBS pickup. So this is definitely going to be a hotter pickup. This has got a badass style bridge on it, um, which is... You know, well, a ton of people have got them. And just to start off with, what I'll do is I'll just play it with the tone and the the volume wide open. My initial thoughts were that this one is a lot, the Moulin is a lot more uh, even across the range of the instrument. Whereas this has definitely got some, like, more quirks. Um, you know, quirks are cool. I'm fine with quirks. I'm just pointing out that... That, you know, that's the differences. So just, I'm gonna play some long tones on this and then we'll play some long tones on the Moulin, okay? Let's get that tone up. very pre-CBS Fender sounding. It's just quite a piano-like um, response from the Moulin. Whereas the Nate Mandel down here is like got a darker response to it. And to be honest with you, I like them both. Okay, so now let's do it in reverse order and hear the Moulin giving a bit of funk and then we'll do the same thing with the, uh, with the, with the Nate Mendel. I suppose that the Moulin, if, if I needed to put it into a, if I need to put a label on it, the Moulin, and this is, they've both got round rounds on as well, the spectrum of sound seems to be a lot wider than the Nate Mendel that seemed narrower to me. And when I'm playing this, even when I'm playing funky, burpy thing that I want it to do. Yeah, 
yeah, sounds killer. Let's hear what the, the name Mendel sounds like. It's like, for me, it sounds totally different. doesn't ring out that well and I've got a good break angle over the nut which is finish wise and feel the Moulin takes it definitely I really do love the Moulin sound as well it's got that real that Fender vibe um, and it just sounds great the Nate sounds darker I suppose if somebody had a gun to my head, I'd probably die because I wouldn't be able to tell you which one I prefer because I like both for different reasons. Again, the Moulin definitely takes it with the finish and, you know, it's, it's a handmade instrument, so it's, it's going to. Right, final decision time. If I had to choose, I'm gonna do this for you guys. If I had to choose, I would take the Moulin all day long. Even though I do like the dark tone of this instrument, I feel like you get way more with the Moulin, way more, like just massive, it's like just such a massive sound. And, and when you use the tone control and stuff like that, you can darken off the sound as well. So although I can't get it to sound exactly like the, uh, the Nate Mendel here, in no way can I get the, the Mendel to sound like the Moulin. So I'd choose the Moulin all day long. One thing that I'm going to have to get used to is the width of the neck. Like this is a, it's, it's a P-Bass, it's a real P-Bass neck, right? And the Nate Mendel has got a thinner neck. It's somewhere between a jazz and a, and a P bass. For me, I, I feel a little more comfortable just personally on a smaller necked instrument. So I'm gonna have to just get in the shed with the, with the P bass neck and just get more comfortable on it really. And that's why I tend to uh, not play my, you know, the P bass of doom, right? Um, that's got a really, really wide neck. So I always play the, the Nate more than the P bass of Doom, probably because the playability is a little easier as well, just because the uh, the neck is is a little thin on the uh, on the Nate. But yeah, so all day long, Moulin, what a killer bass. Okay guys, hopefully you enjoyed this kind of review, unboxing thing, whatever it is. Uh, if you want to check out more of my videos, obviously just, you know, subscribe to the YouTube channel. That would be awesome. And if you really want to take your bass playing to the next level as well, make sure you go to scottsbasslessons.com because that is what I actually do. That's my thing. We've got the, uh, the biggest online learning platform for bass players in the world. There's me doing stuff over there, a gazillion online courses for you guys to get stuck into. And we also do live streams every single week and a whole lot more as well. So go check that out at scottsbasslessons.com and, and I'll love you forever. Other than that, take it easy and I'll see you in the, where DMAC? Shed! In the shed! Two thousand and fifteen Kickstarter challenge. Hey, everybody. Hey, hey, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hello, all. Hello.